Blessing Sam. Welcome to your program, Jeremiah 2911, with your host, Dr. Marisol Peltzer, my beloved husband over there, the little rascal. Amen. Blessings. Dr. Peltzer, and our beloved anointed spiritual mom, Dr. Mary Kay Baxter. Amen. Welcome, Amen. Mama. Welcome. Amen. Welcome, Dexter. Amen. Welcome, Marisol. I'm rejoicing Amen. because today's program is about the heart of God. For the lost. For the lost. Hallelujah. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son who should ever believe will not die but be saved, will not be lost. Amen. And the name of the program is Anointing to Love the Lost. A, to put it simpler, burning for the lost. Having a burning, uh, uh, a love to pray for the people that are lost and to preach the gospel in Jesus' name. And before we begin, I'm going to encourage you to go to Mary Kay Baxter, Inc., which is Mama's website and for you to go and her bookstore, amen? And so that you can be blessed with some of her books, like A Revined Revelation of Angels. This book is amazing. It, amen. it was um, a book that I read and I thoroughly enjoyed because it tells you about what the angels do, what is their purpose and all these. And then A Divine Revelation of Heaven. Who doesn't want to know about heaven, Dexter, amen? amen. And if amen. you're a Christian, this is where you're going to go. Heaven, amen. amen. And the Lord took it to heaven for 10 days after he took it to hell for 30 days. And this is what this book is about, a divine revelation of hell. And talking about a burning for souls, this is an evangelistic book. If you know somebody that needs to know Jesus, give them this book and they'll be saved because this book is anointed and it tells the truth about hell. Amen. Amen. It's a wonderful book. Sorry. Yes. Amen. So before we start, we have some prayer requests. We have a wonderful young lady named Diane that needs healing. Um, and she has called us for prayer. And some of those, um, so we need to pray for her. And we also want to pray from some precious sisters in Venezuela that are widows, and so we want to pray for them, amen? So, amen. Dexter, can you assist the mama and pray, for, amen? Amen. Yes. And Father, I want to start out, but we're going to pray for Diane. Yes. Father, I'm so thankful for our brothers yes. and sisters, and we just declare we love each other deeply. Yes. And we're all brothers and sisters together, and we're all in this together, Father. And so yes. I want to pray for... Diane, Lord, that you would bless her incredibly, and, and specifically, Lord, that she has um, in her back an injury, and we're going to pray for that in a yes, second. Lord. But first, Father, there have been, <coughs> in her life and many of our lives, many times people that have hurt us deeply. Yes. Um, yes. We have pains and suffering that we go through. And so first, I want to come in agreement with you, Diane, that we forgive those who have hurt you deeply. Yes, Father. Father, not only do we forgive, but we choose to love the, the, those people, and we yes. ask you to save their souls, Father. Holy Spirit, that you will work in their lives for salvation. Yes, hallelujah. And you will bless them, that we will be able to call them brothers and sisters, Father. And help us to have a testimony, if it's ever available, to let them know that we have forgiven them and we love them you, in Christ. So, Father, I ask Thank you to you fill Jesus. our hearts for this forgiveness always because we choose to forgive yes. any who hurt us in Jesus' name. And now, Lord, Hallelujah. Diane has some back injuries. And so, Father, by the precious stripes yes, of the yes. Lamb of God, the finished work of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. First Peter yes. 2, 24, that by his stripes we have been healed. We speak Amen. that word into your back, and right now, Lord, I ask you to align everything Ooh. in your back, her spinal cord, yes, the yes. wrists, everything. In the name of Jesus Christ, yes, be made Lord whole Jesus. and be healed in the name of Jesus of right. Nazareth. And we praise you, Lord, for this healing and pain. You must go in Jesus' name. Spirits of infirmity that are attacking you, you must go to waterless places and never return in Jesus' name. And now we bless, we speak life into your spinal cord, in your Hallelujah. back. Thank you, speak Jesus. life and proper functioning in the name yes, of Jesus Lord. Christ. Thank you, Lord, for that beautiful Amen. healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And the 
people, do you want to pray for them or do you want me to? I, 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 first of all, you, you probably know and you, you may not remember, but the Lord put an incredible burden on Marisol's heart for a church in Venezuela and supernaturally connected her with Jonathan's church in Venezuela. And as a result, even those of you, we've made an appeal on TV that have given into that, just know and understand that many, many, many souls have been saved. Miracles have been done, and Hallelujah. they are providing meals for these precious people in Venezuela. Amen. Where there is a shortage of food, yes. an incredible shortage of food. Yes. They've been providing meals for them six days out of each week. Right, Marisol? Yes. Dutifully now, for how many days, Marisol? For 14 weeks now. 14 weeks, and we see That's incredible wonderful. fruit. So I just want to stop for a second. The Spirit just fell on me. Any of you want to give into this 100% of every penny you give into shalomshalom.org will go to Venezuela for this incredible Amen. food ministry because yes. the Word says feed those who are hungry before you proclaim the gospel, which is what they are doing. And now many are being saved. And Amen. these pictures right here are of the widows. You, you may not be able to see. But they just send us a you small... You want us to hold some yeah, up? So we'll hold some of yeah. them, Mama. Give us all some. There you go. There you go. We yeah. want to pray with them. Yeah, we want you to help us pray with them, for them. Amen? And so, these are precious widows. And yeah. what does the Lord say is religion in His sight that is worth anything? It is to what? Visit and care for the widows, widows and orphans yes, in yes. their distress and yes, to keep Victor. oneself unpolluted by the evil yes. of the world. This is what the gospel and the epistles tell us is true religion in God's sight. Right. So, Father, we want to lift Thank these yes. precious widows up. Yes. We ask you, Father, to provide bountifully, Father, for all of their needs as widows. Yes. Because you say you're now their husband. Yes. And you're their father. And we bless each one of them by the ironic blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you, each one Thank of you, you our too, precious sir. sisters. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And Lord, even those that still need to be comforted for their loss, we come in agreement. We ask you, the great comforter, Holy Spirit, yes, Lord. to pour out your loving comfort into their souls yes. and into their spirits. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank amen. you. The Lord is so good. He keeps us up burning for souls. It's and about people. The gospel is about loving people. Amen. And it's one of the things that, you know, when we, even Marisol and I give into ministries, we, we always want to give where it's bearing fruit for the Lord, and it's in his perfect will. And I can assure you from the divine circumstances that led to this ministry and from the fruit of it, this Amen. is beautiful. In fact, you could call it revival breaking out in those communities. And so much so that other churches are want to replicate what they do in Venezuela Amen. and provide food for the hungry because of the humanitarian crisis that is in Venezuela. You know what we said. Even one time the pastor, Jonathan, he called us and said there was a shortage of milk. We prayed with you over TV. And as God is my witness, an abundance of milk was provided that very next week yes. for the children because they had a, a vast shortage of milk they could not get any and so that was provided for them Amen. last week someone provided for a stove they reached out and, and made a prayer request for a stove and glory be to god that money has now been sent to venezuela for the stove because they were Amen. cooking for so many over a wood burning stove they needed another stove Hallelujah. And we give all the glory, honor, and praise to the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. And this is really part of, and the Spirit's all over me, part of what we're teaching today. Amen. Is God's incredible burden from the Father and the Son to the Holy Spirit for the lost Ooh. and for the hurting. Amen. And he uses us now as his ambassadors of that incredible love. And so stay with us today, because yesterday we prayed with a beautiful church for an anointing of the people that wanted, which was almost everyone in the church, and boy, this anointing fell powerfully on them. To have the heart, father's and the son's very burden in your heart for the lost. And I will tell you another thing that the Lord has been teaching me over and over again, that if you have the fruit of the Spirit and the love for the lost, the gifts of God under 1 Corinthians chapter 12 will flow naturally in response to that compassion 
and love and mercy for those who are hurting and for the lost. Right. That's how the very spiritual gifts that many of us desire and ask for, the Lord says, will then go out and love the lost, and then they will flow. And I am telling you, Marisol and I, we have, we have no instances where we go out to the lost out in the world where the gifts do not flow, as God is my witness. So Amen. for many of us that are zealous for greater gifts and for the gifts, remember, the secret is really having that burden for the lost and the hurting and for our brothers and sisters who truly love them. All right, I want to get into a few scriptures. Then we're going to give a testimony of yesterday and some of the testimonies even of what Jesus personally told Mary when she went to hell about his intense burden for the lost. And then we're going to pray for that anointing at the end. All who want that burden, <laughs> I believe the Lord will release that, even as he did Amen. yesterday. All right, Mark 16, 15. First, we are in such a world of compromise and of grayness and lukewarm. But let me tell you something that is the truth. In Mark 16, 15 and 16, when Jesus spoke to his disciples, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And here is the truth. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. We will spend eternity in heaven with the Lord and the Father and the Holy Spirit and all our brothers and sisters. But he who does not believe will be condemned and will spend eternity in hell. This is something we cannot be lukewarm about. I am telling you this over your own families, your own friends, your own even co-workers, your own community that you live in. We need to have a heavy burden to understand there are only two places that people will go. And Jesus alone is the way, the truth, and the life to the Father. No one can be reconciled to the Father but through faith in Jesus Christ, what the scriptures say. And there's only one way. So if it com combine the fact there's only one way and there are only two paths for everyone that ever lives on this earth, you and I, to go to, it's heaven or hell. We will understand anyone that we love will never, we will never want them to go to hell. Amen. Ever. All right. Matthew 9, 37 and 38. Why are we going to pray for this anointing to have a burden for the lost, for the harvest to come in? Well, Jesus gave us a hint in this scripture. It says, Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest, meaning souls that are still unsaved, truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Amen. Therefore, pray the Lord <coughs> of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. This is where the rubber hits the road. Amen. That's you and I. The yes, harvest. Yes, hallelujah. If I pray this prayer, I'm praying for myself to go out into the harvest. And that means I want the same burden for the loss that the Lord has, as we're going to see in more scriptures in a moment. This is where the rubber hits the road. This is not praying for others to do all the work of the kingdom. This is for you and I. This is what we're going to ask for the anointing for and the burden for in the name of Jesus. All right. 1 Corinthians 9.19. You know, this is one of the blessings that Mama has always given to Marisol and I. Is She's telling us many times when she sees a soul and she starts crying and the burden of the Lord comes upon her which it's beautiful. She tells us that we need to walk in their shoes. We need to be one with what they're going through. And Amen. therefore we will release the gifts of the spirit, including compassion and love. When we just stop and walk in their shoes and understand what they're going through, that releases the fruit of the spirit, which then releases the gifts of the spirit and ministry to them, which is beautiful and effective ministry to the lost. Amen. Yes, Marisol. I want to testify to yeah. that. Amen. We have a Bible study in my house, and Mama came and spoke in one of those Bible studies. And there was this sweet sister, Lesbia. She had breast cancer. And Mama had all the ladies pray for her. And we were all crying, because she says, how about if this was you <clears throat> that had this disease? And then she taught us to have the love for other people Amen. and to pray for them. Amen. And it was beautiful how so many ladies in that room prayed for her. We cried with her. 
we hugged her. We really yes. interceded in the spirit. In one accord. In one accord with love and compassion. Yes. And the result was the Lord healed her. Yes. Remember, Mama? Yes, honey, yes. And can I say something? Yeah, after? yeah Mama. Uh, the scripture that Dexter is talking about is so important because when I walked with Jesus in hell, I saw Dexter where the alcoholics go. Mm. I saw where the drug addicts, I saw where the, the witches, the warlocks, the works of your flesh in Galatians. I actually saw, you know, where people are bound by alcohol, never get delivered, Dexter, burning in hellfire. Mm. I saw where the drug addicts were screaming, I'll never take another drug if I can get out of hell. So I actually am... Uh, this love that God gave me, He wants to give them, Dexter. Because what if it was you out there with no hope, no place to live? Who would help you after you burn every bridge? It's got to be Jesus that's going to help us, Dexter, through all this stuff. But we got to be real, Dexter. We got to tell Him the truth. You ain't going to get a lot of help if you're lying, cheating, and stealing. You're not going to get it. Because uh, the Lord wants you to understand He loves you much. But they got a change coming in your life to prove you mean business with God once you turn to God. Right, next year. Amen. Yes. And you know, um, one thing that Mama always told us that she heard in hell was many that cried out, I thought I had more time to yes. give my life to Jesus. I thought I had time to repent from my spirit. sinful life and my sins and be freed of them. I thought I had time. Yes, Dex, that's what And the Spirit is all over me. The Word says today is a day of salvation. Amen. Wow. And I'm telling you, this is a burden for not only for yourself if you're not saved, but for others. Amen. You do not know the day appointed for you. Jesus said that to the rich man. And your very soul is required of you mm. this night. Only God knows the days ordained for each one of us. We do not Jesus, know that. Jesus, hallelujah. This is a difference. All are either saved or condemned Ooh. and spend eternity under eternal torment or in the love of the Father yes, and the Son Lord. and the Holy Spirit forever. Ooh. The difference between those is wider than anything you can imagine ever of the greatest pain versus your greatest yes. joy. It does not compare. It's right, extra. Not even close. Whew. So if we understand that, it is today is a day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not the next day. Hallelujah. Make a decision in your heart. And I tell you, I, as a prodigal son, when I understood this and the horrors of hell, and believe me, I understood the horrors of hell and where I was going. Even before I met Mary Kay Baxter, I understood it. And boy, did I understand the need for my, me to repent and give my life totally to the Lord. And you know, son. Uh, and I did. I'm yes. Sorry. You know what Dexter's saying is so true that God loved him so much. He showed him a dramatic vision of what, where he was going. Yes. But Jesus Christ shed that blood on that cross for you and I to have eternal salvation. He did it. He knew the world was chaos. He knew, didn't he, Dexter? He had to pay a price and come from heaven down to earth and give his life for you and I or we would not have Jesus Christ if he did not pay the price. The blood he shed will wash away any sin, Dexter. That's right. It is so true. And while we're on that, Mama, you've shared with us at times where Jesus stopped with you in hell and the blood was coming out of his... Yes, sir. The very piercing in his hands and his feet. Yes. And what he said to you, Mama, when he yes. saw these lost souls. Yeah, and... Uh, uh, it was a lot coming to from his wrist here and his hand. Yes, amen. But uh, he would walk and he would look in a valley, Dexter. Maybe a lot of youth down there burn, burning and screaming, let us out, let us out, we, we repent. And it's too late. I mean, millions, not just a hundred. And then we'd walk another place and there would be a, a black cavern with snakes crawling out of it and demons and skeletons screaming and running on fire into that place. And Jesus said, my father had mercy and I felt his hand. I was in the spirit, he was in the flesh. And I felt warm and I looked and blood was gushing out of his hands. And I looked at his feet and blood was coming out of his feet. And he said, child, I paid a high price to wash their sins away. If they'd only repented 
before they came here. If they'd only take heed to their ways and turn to me, I would hear, I would listen. He said, whosoever call on the name of the Lord, I will save. And you know, Marisol, do you want to give, uh, and Mama's, I'm going to give honor, honor to Mama. She's always trying to give honor to us. These books are anointed, the divine yes. revelation of hell. My poppy, who was about 87, 88 years old, read that book, going to a Lutheran church all his life. He read that book, and what happened, Marisol? One day, I was in the kitchen, and he said, Marisol, Marisol. And I go, what, Papa? He goes, the blood of Jesus has power. And I go, really? He goes, yes. He goes, I need to pray for my son because I read this in this book that he needs to be saved. I want him to go to hell. And I said, okay, Papa, we got to wait for Dexter to come home. We didn't know Mama then. No. Amen. So then that night when Dexter got home, my, my father-in-law, who was is in his 80s he was waiting eagerly for um dexter to get home and when as soon as dexter got home he said we need to we prayed after we ate and everything and that night i had a dream oh can i just yes act 16 31 is what we prayed as you have believed you and your whole household will be saved and all the promises of jesus are yes in jesus christ which means that promise we prayed it from the Father to me, the next generation, with Marisol in agreement. We prayed it over our entire family line for their salvation, including those who my father believed were currently lost. Go ahead, Marisol. So then that night, the Lord gave me a, a dream where there was a train, and Jesus was the conductor. And Dexter's whole family, all his brothers, nieces, nephews, the whole Pilzer family, was in the train and I told grandpa he goes so happy I said grandpa the Lord heard our prayers amen and it's so interesting he continued reading mama's books he ate them all yeah he, ate he would up. sit in the sofa all day oh my goodness reading oh. the books amen and then he would say Marisol Marisol come here and he would tell me did you know this did you know that oh yeah, I gotta tell you and he was he was truth, on fire he was on fire the truth was coming out because these books are anointed. Are anointed, and they have scriptures, and they're aligned with the word. Amen. Amen. So I would encourage you before she goes on to get Mary's books. If you don't have the burden for the lost, if you're not praying for your family members that are unsaved to be saved, please buy these books. Start out with Divine Revelation of Hell. You will understand, and in Divine Revelation of Heaven, the difference between the two, the gulf between the two and you will get a burden because they are anointed for that burden. My very father got that burden as a result of reading this. And, and I want to read to you her website, www.marykbaxterinc.com. And if you didn't get it, you can write to us, at, and I will give you the, the link. Amen? Let me repeat it again. www.marykbaxterinc.com. Amen. So we haven't finished the story. Tell him, I want him, Dexter to tell it because yeah. he loves it, to finish so, the story. I love this story. Four months later, I'm on my way to a client meeting in Orange County, and it gets canceled. Marisol gets a call to come to this luncheon with this lady. <laughs> Never met her before. It's Mary Kay Baxter. Marisol goes, I turn around my car and I come back and I join her in a luncheon. Well, the Lord just linked us together in one spirit yes. with an incredible love of each other. And it just happened that... We're family. Mama mm -hmm. had the opportunity to do beautiful ministry within the L.A. area and got a chance to live with us for over six months while she was yeah, doing this ministry. Yeah, a long time on it. <laughs> Glory be to we God. We had a ball. Which changed our lives, by the way. During that six months... The very one that we prayed over in my family calls me, hasn't visited me for 17 years. He calls and said, my wife and I want to come visit you guys in L.A. <laughs> he comes to visit. The very person whose book my papi read before we even met her was the one who sat there on the chair. I still remember right around the dining room table. I remember exactly where they sat, and she led them both to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation as the tears were coming down, as God is my witness. 
The very vision that Marisol had was fulfilled. Because remember, all the promises are yes in Jesus Christ. And if you believe your old household will be saved. And if you have that burden to pray as we did over our household and our family lives, then you will see the miracles of salvation. Because we've taught this that God does not call an individual but families to salvation. Amen. Even as he did with Amen. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, but all the way down. Amen. When we understand that, we will have a burden for every family member that is lost. Right. And some of you, I hear you right now saying, because the Lord just said it, mm -hmm. how can I bring in the harvest? I'm just one little person. Wow. Hey, Dexter. And you know, I want you, Do you to know. Do you know my, my salvation in my family, how precious that is? As a result of one little person, my poppy, having that burden and crying out for the lost? Yes. Wow. Yes, Talk Dexter. about helping the harvest and then multiplying within your family and then multiplying that into their communities yes, and God. multiplying the salvation awesome. to whole generations that will follow. Yes. I and, want to say something. Yeah. Uh, in the studio, on the walls is pictures of California cities and I'm looking at it Dexter's talking I'm thinking how many in there are not born again thousands of buildings wow. thousands of high towers and as we're looking at these beautiful pictures how many hundreds and thousands of apartments and how many really know Jesus Dexter and we're doing everything in our power to let you know he's real we're not phonies we're, we mean business God is coming back, and buddy, we need to get ready. Don't we, Dexter? Hallelujah. Don't we, Marsha? Yes. Say something, honey. And, you know, sorrow. Sometimes when we are driving around and we'll see it's in the true. city, Mama says, Oh, look at all those lights. Look, look at all those people. I, Thank I wonder if they're safe. Marissa, let's pray for the cars. And we start praying for the people in the cars for them to get saved. We have to have a burden for the lost. More we, people need to yes, say hell. Yes. They do, Dexter. Amen. Really, you, you know. do. And when we, re, when we release that anointing, I'd like us to also yes. pray for those who would want to see hell so they have a greater burden in their heart. We'll also pray that the Lord will actually bring you and show you that. And if you want Sister Mary to, to come to your church, contact us. She's back on the road serving God, doing ministry. She could be at home, but she loves people. And... She's still on the road preaching about hell and heaven because that was what the Lord commissioned her to do. So get in touch with us. Thank She's you. doing ministry. Oh, God, Amen. Fire. And, and, we don't. and we don't. for the lost, for people, for them to hear the truth. Amen. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Well, we're mm. going to tell them something. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Mama. Well, last night at church, uh, we yeah. were at Shekinah. Glory Church with Pastor uh, Smiles. Sweet. 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 Pastor mm -hmm. Sweet. And he had an, an experience with God, and he saw hell. And I saw hell. And then another great prophet of God had talked to him overseas. He saw hell. And in my trip to hell, I saw out of darkness, Dexter. I was taken by Jesus out of hell into the galaxy, into a dark area in, in the galaxy. And Jesus said, this is our outer darkness. What are you going to do about it? Amen. And he told that other prophet the same thing. And when we went down this dark place, then we could, I could feel heat and fire, Dexter. And it was boiling, raging fire. And like a, a huge great lake. big lake yes. of fire. Tell them Boiling that like cauldrons of... Like angry. Yes. And, and, and it was alive, right, Dexter? Right. That prophet said the same thing. It was so angry, it would rage and roar. The fire. And then, and then I looked in the fire, and there were skeletons swimming to the edge, and the fire would oh, suck the them back under. Yes. What do you call it? The unredeemed, the lost. Yes. Those who had rejected Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Yes. There were no demons are dead, no devil, just the burning souls. And uh, that scripture, Dexter, all of, if you, where he said, I will look over heaven, and they would actually see the judgment of God. And this fire that I'm talking about never stops burning, just like the one in Hawaii that's flowing. That's exactly what it looked like. And then in the top of it, Dexter, was a dirt ledge, and thousands was marching straight into hell, uh, eternal. And their eyes was so shut, their ears, Dexter, was so, so shut. shut. When what did Isaiah said? Tell them they have eyes. They have eyes to see, but they will not see. They have ears to hear, but they will not hear what the truth of Yeshua HaMashiach, and they rejected him. That's why the, 
and the, the judgment was set, yes. Yeah, and it just the dirt, all the dirt under it fell out and disappeared into the air. And then they slid like a volcano would erupt. All of them begin to fall into them fires, Dexter. Oh my their clothes God. burn up and they're screaming. And Christ said to me, pointed, what are you going to do about it? I said, Jesus, what can I do about it? He said, tell them, tell them what I've shown you. You tell them and don't stop. And children, that was in, in 1976, and God has still let me go tell it. And I've been to 128 nations, Dexter, telling this story about eternal damnation. And I met a Korean, a Chinese pastor. He also saw hell. He had 10,000 members in three churches because he preached on hell. And you ministers out there need to read and preach on hell to your people because it is real. There's a place in hell, Dexter, for preachers that lie to their congregations and don't tell them about heaven and hell. It's the Holy Bible. That's our eternity. And there's a place that you go to and you burn in boiling hot fire in the middle of hell in a tank. Hell's in the middle of the earth. It has sections, degrees of fire. And every sin of your flesh, you read Galatians, and you'll find out who goes to hell. If it you're says a, any who are yeah. practicing these sins yes. Practicing. Got will it. not inherit the kingdom of God. And that's important. That's why Romans 6.14 says, Sin shall have no dominion over you. And wow. Romans 8.13 says that if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your flesh, the sins, you will live. It's very important that we understand that truth of the Word of God. And, and Dexter, also the prophet told uh, Pastor Smiles that there was a place that the prophet saw the fire in this outer darkness who had an arm. It was so angry if someone got thrown out of the fire. Try to climb up on the side. Yeah, that, that hand. The fire would kill literally them. like form a, a, and grab them back into the fire, into the eternal torment. And then Jesus Christ himself asked you a question, Mama. Yes. What are you going to do about it? And you, well, you said, what can I do about it, right? Go yes, ahead, sir. the testimony. I asked him what, three times, he told me, and pointed his finger. He said, you go and tell, and I'll be with you. That's what he told me. Amen. Yeah. And I want to read that scripture go if ahead. I can. Yes, I'm Because I think I'm prophetically done. you were seen into the lake of fire, Mama. Yes. Read it. Son. It says in Revelation 20:12, and I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. This is the oh great my. white throne judgment. And books were opened, of course, the books of our life. They're not covered a, in the blood. Which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Got it. Wow, that's important. The sea gave up the dead were who were in it, and death and Hades delivered Ooh. up the dead were who were in them, everyone currently in hell. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. That's this is the darkness. second death. Ooh, and God. anyone not oh, found Marshall. written in the Lamb's book of life oh, was Jesus. cast into oh, the lake Father. of fire. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. This is not reversible. Oh, Jesus, and as Mama oh, saw, the Jesus. people are already in hell. Oh, Jesus. Crying out to repent. And, the f and Jesus oh. himself said to Mama, their judgment oh. is set. Oh, there is no purgatory. There is no praying for those people afterwards. Their judgment is set. That's why for you and I, today is a day of salvation. Mm -hmm. Wow. And everyone we love, by the way. Your brothers, your sisters, your mom, your dad, your aunts, your uncles, your children, your grandchildren. Wow. Everyone. And and, and Pastor Saul, he actually, Pastor uh, Sweet uh, Saul, a part of hell that was full of an area of where the toilets, sewers go down into hell. There was a big pool of it. And set skeletons were thrown in there to, to burn because Christ showed them to me in a skeleton form full of dead man's bones and a, a vapor inside that was their soul that never leaves that inner part. And he showed me those things and how Pastor was talking about, he got so sick looking at that, and the skeletons coming up and screaming, it would suck them back under again like a vacuum. And many were in a pit, if I can just, because you yes, shared this tell so many it, times. And the uncleanness, yes. Um, and each one was a section of like Galatians yes, 5, 20, 21, 22. You know, as you go yes. through 19, 20, 21, each was a section yes. of the body of hell and the yes. earth. 
and in each pit was written their primary yes. sins that they were practicing. So for all of eternity, they would see the word of God of what they disobeyed. Dick said for this, all of eternity. Yes. I just heard someone and, in the spirit cry. What are the sins? I go to hell for what are them? Galatians so read them, Dexter. Galatians 5, son. Starting right around yeah, verse start 17. Yes, start at verse 17. Read 17, that for okay. Galatians 5, verse 17. It tells you what you go to hell for, unless you repent. So first, it, it starts out with really our battle for the flesh, lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. And then it goes into, if, if we're not led by the spirit, here's what happens. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, the gospel and the epistles tell us that all judgment will be done by the word of God. In fact, the Lord must judge by what the word of God says. Amen. It says he, he, he must judge by it. So this is the truth, and this is how judgment will be done. Even Jesus Christ cannot make an exception, neither can the Father. This is why it is so important. My mama always says that we must crucify our flesh. As what, what Romans 6 to 8 tells us how. Yes. If you have not crucified the flesh, go back to Romans 6 and 8, and it tells you how to do that, even with the Spirit's help in Romans 8, 13, that if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh. Yes, Mama. Now, uh, Dexter is telling you the truth, but he, didn't he say that... Uh, you continue in these things. All of us used to do some of that stuff. Everybody before you came to Christ. But when you come to Christ, you have to overcome the lust of your flesh. And if you accidentally get caught in some of this, that don't mean you're going to go to hell, Dexter. It means you got to repent quickly and go on. Right, Dexter? Let me just be perfectly yeah, clear. As a prodigal son, I was on this list. Oh, God, Dexter. I want to be perfectly clear, but this is what happened to me, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Because there's some of you who are saying, I can't be freed of the sin. I was freed of the worst sins that you can imagine. You listen to the truth of what Christ will do in Christ to free you. Listen to this, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous. Wow nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And I was on this very list. Oh, Lord, Dexter. I am not being judgmental. I am so thankful that the Lord saved me. Yes, judgment. And such were some of you. Listen to this. Glory. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified hallelujah. in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the yes, Spirit Lord, hallelujah. of our Lord God blood. Almighty. Thank by the God. power of God, Romans 6.14, that when you crucify your flesh, by the power of the Spirit, sin shall have no dominion over you. You will crucify its power over you. This is what happened in me. All of that, Lord. God, by the power of the resurrection. But we have a beautiful helper, Romans 8.13, again, the Holy Spirit. He is the Spirit of sanctification. He will walk you through this, and He will, by His power, Take away the power of those sins in your flesh. That's why Romans 8 says that by the Spirit we're to put to death the deeds, deeds of the flesh, the power of it. Yes. Amen. Son, didn't you also, also you were saying that uh, you only was a Sunday go church or just on Sunday you were a Christian? Yeah, that's why I had the vision, yes. Tell them your vision, honey. Yeah, so, you know, as a prodigal son, I needed not only to be freed of the sin which I was repentant of, but I needed to give my whole life to the Lord. Because you can't be, you can't just put your toe in the water and just be a Sunday Christian. 
which I thought I could go back and do, being brought up in the Lutheran church. And I found out, no. He took me in a vision in heaven. An angel did. And Jesus Christ himself vomited me out of his mouth. Jesus. I wasn't all in yet. And he told me. For visions, amen. Ooh, thank God for those. The letter to the Laodiceans in Revelation chapter 3, Ooh. right around verse 15, 16, 17, you read it. He said, hmm. I would that you are hot or cold, but since you are lukewarm, I will vomit you out. Wow. And he told me, because of your calling, you will either be hot or cold for me. You, I will not allow you to be lukewarm. You make a choice. Wow. And I made the choice to be all in. Wow. And my wife knows this. Mary knows this. Mm. I am all in for the Lord. Amen, sir. When the, I saw his mercy and he washed me clean by the blood of the Lamb of all my guilt and shame from my sins, he gave us everything for me on the cross, and he took all of my sins on him on the cross. How could I not give him but my whole life? I understood it, and I am thankful because I'm telling you, that vision almost crushed me and destroyed me because I had fear of hell that was beyond what you can ever think or imagine. The devil was throwing fiery darts wow. at me every day. See, wow. you blew it. But wow. the Lord had a different message. His love, how he chastises his children, is so full of love, he will actually, in his mercy, show me the depth of my sin and that my choice was not all in and that could result in hell for me. Give you a vision. And give visions to people. That is yes, love. Lord Jesus. That is perfect wow. love. Because he knew exactly what I needed to save my soul. Yes, Marisol. And you know, when you receive such love and so much mercy. Wow, Dexter. When you receive God's love and you are redeemed and, and truly you, forgiven. And truly forgiven. Wash clean. That gives you a loss for the people that do not know the Lord yet. How can we keep the treasure? We have to speak of him. Let people know that he loves them and he wants to touch their lives. He wants to redeem them. He wants to give them salvation. He wants to restore them. He wants to set the captive free. He wants to heal them. Hallelujah. So we Hallelujah. must proclaim the gospel because the, the first commandment and the biggest gift is love. Right. To love one another right, Dexter. as he loved us. Amen, Dexter. And you know, Glory the truth God. of God's word came to life in me. Those who are forgiven much will love much. Yes. Those who are forgiven little will love little. And because of that, I carry mercy for those who are hurting and are fallen and are lost. Because of the greatness of his love to forgive the sin, I was the greatest sinner I know. The greatness of my washing being clean meant I Ooh. have incredible love and wow. mercy for others that are like me. And we must understand that. If you take lightly your sin before God, take wow. lightly the washing clean of the precious blood of the Lamb of your sins, you, we need to go back to the cross, which I did, till I saw the depth of what Jesus Christ, the price he paid for me on the cross. I actually had a vision of it. And you will right. never be the same. What was your yes. vision, Dave? What was your vision? My vision was of Jesus Christ before the cross. This happened in Israel. The Lord showed me in his agony after the 39 stripes, he could not carry the cross and how he was crying out to the Father for help to get to the mountain and fulfill his calling of dying on the yeah. cross for each wow. one of us. I saw his pain and his agony and crying out for help for the Father. And of Jeez. course, we know the word. The Father provided that help. Someone carried the cross. I think his name was Simon. Bless you, Simon. He carried the cross on his behalf. But I felt the burden, and I weeped. I'll never forget it. The very pastor who huh, baptized me in the Jordan River, tears were pouring down. He came and wiped the tears away. and. and just loved on me in the midst of seeing that vision. Bless your heart. I still remember it. And you'll never be the same if you understand what Jesus Christ did for you and the depths of our sin that he had to carry on himself in Isaiah chapter 53. Please read that again. He who 
is forgiven much will love much. You will have such a burden for the lost when you've received the fullness of God's love and forgiveness over you. And one of the things that Mama says that when she sees people in hell, some of them say, why didn't you tell me, tell my family? Yes. Yep, they always want their family told. Well, there's a story of Lazarus, right? Yes. And the rich man yeah, asked Luke for Lazarus 16, to go tell his family. Chapter 16, verse 19 of Luke tells you how you can see in hell, Dexter. Talking to him, remember your family while you're burning in hell. It tells that. You know how. It's all real. Yes. All right, I, I want to talk about the burden of our Lord, the Father and the Son for the lost, so that we have that same burden. Mm -hmm. Luke 19.10, just a couple more scriptures, and then we're going to start praying and giving more testimonies. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Please understand Amen. that. Amen. Combined with this next scripture, you will understand that he didn't ask us to come and judge the lost, but to save them as his ambassadors for Christ. Ooh. John 3, 17. This is the truth. And those of you who speak judgment even over your own countries, remember Jesus Christ, when the sons of thunder asked for fire to come down and destroy a Samaritan village that rejected Jesus Christ for coming into the village and spending the night, Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you have. Listen to what Jesus says. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Do you hear that? Yes. This is not a ministry of condemnation, which the word says the law was. Read Galatians and read Hebrews. This is a ministry of grace. That's right. 2 Peter 3, 9. I love these truths about the Father's heart and the Son's heart. 2 Peter 3, 9. This scripture, I remember when I read it, just completely changed me. The Lord, our Lord Jesus, is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us. Why? Because as a prodigal son, he did not allow me to die and go to hell. I actually had a dear sister, Juanita Mullins, that was praying for me, my poppy's prayers. Thank you, Lord, yes, that honey, people were actually God. loving me, even in the midst of my sin. Amen. He says, he is long-suffering towards you and I, even as prodigals. Understand that. That's right. Not Mr. willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I mean, the right. turning for me, from my sinful ways of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, to the point where I was sanctified and set free in obeying the Lord in 1 Corinthians 6, 11. Free of the dominion of all of those sins in my life. That's the power of God. Amen. If and that power can wash all my sins clean, it can also take away the dominion of any sin in my life. Yes, Mary. And Dexter, read uh, Acts, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the book of Acts, Acts, I think it is 3, at verse 19. Oh, that's right. Mm. Is it? Amen. Repent, yeah, therefore. Yeah. Yeah. Repent, therefore, and be converted. Ooh, santo. And you'll be born again. That your sins may be blotted out. Let's tell them about that. Yes. When, when I, I, real quick, I'll tell you. When I was taken to heaven, I went to heaven ten times. I was taken and shown the record rooms in heaven. I was shown how what happens when someone gets born again. Mm -hmm. They brought the angels brought up a book from a man just got saved in a service on the earth. And the angels had recorded the offerings, what was preached, and a man came to the altar and received Christ in his heart. But as he did, uh, there were black bands around him, Dexter. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm a liar, and a, a hand, the angel's hand would burst with fire, burn that off. Ever sin, he said he did, and confessed to God at the altar. And you can do it right home in your bedroom, wherever you're at, on the street, wherever. But ever sin he confessed, he was all wrapped in black bands. But they began to burst by the angels touched him, and fire went off. And the last thing, one angel touched his heart. He had a heart of stone. And when he accepted Christ, the heart turned to flesh. Oh, yeah. And then they took the book. They said, come with us. They wrote everything down, Dexter, everything. And they took it to heaven, and when they got before the throne of God with it, 
before they came to the throne, it was taken to a room of like a library with big angels everywhere, thousands of books. Mm -hmm. And they stood in line, the two angels come their turn, Dexter, there was like a chief angel at a big table. And he was the, the one in charge of that room. So they took a book and laid it in front of this angel when it came their turn, and he opened up the, the notes in it. He didn't look over here. And he said, are you two witnesses that this man received Jesus Christ on this day in this church by this message? And they said, yes, we were there. So then the angel wrote down something else, and then the pages in the back were only three clear. He said, this man has three days to live. And what happened, Dexter? They said, watch what we do. And they let me get up there behind that big angel. And he took the book. He said, we want you to tell the earth what we do. And the book was kind of shaded looking. And he handed it behind him. And all these angels, Marcel, sitting on the floor with a bucket, a gold bucket mm -hmm. of red, like this beautiful material, bright red, and glory like sunshine in it. And they took that man's book. And from the beginning of his life, they washed every page, Dexter, in crimson red. All the writing disappeared. Everything blotted out, page after page, till they got to where he was saved, and they left that in there. And then the book, went, it's all Bible, went before the throne of God. And when God saw that book, here's what he said. Mm -hmm. He said, I see another one has received my son as the saved. I see another one has been born again by my son. He preached about his son, that there'd never be another Jesus, Amen. that he was the only way to heaven was through Jesus Christ and the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Yes. Wow. Amen. We have four minutes. Next. All right, oh. I want to pray. Go ahead. Yeah. And I'm going to first pray Proverbs 23, 26. Let's all pray this together. Yes. Those of you who want this anointing, this will be, I believe this will be released, a burden in your hearts for the lost as yes. a result of this, the very Father's burden and the Son's. It says, my son, give me your heart yes. and let your eyes observe my ways, which we have read your ways and now we want to see them. So, Father, in the name of yes. Jesus Christ, each of us right now, yes. our hearts of stone or whatever is in our hearts that is not pleasing to you, we give you our entire hearts, Father, and ask you to make them hearts of flesh, circumcise them, and put them on fire for the burden of the lost, Father. Not only that, give us a burden for those in our family, for our friends, for our relatives, for anyone, Father. Show us those who are not saved and give us a burden to intercede. And then our feet are shod with the gospel. I ask you to give us boldness and an opening for proclaiming the gospel into their lives, Lord. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I want to pray Psalm 5110. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. In me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit with me. Hallelujah. And Mary, I want you to pray now because you have such a burden for the loss. Uh -huh. And we're going to lay our spiritual hands out okay. as you pray for people to receive that burden and that I don't know. Yes, and you that are watching, really pay attention, honey. And ask Jesus Christ right now to forgive you of all your sins, no matter what you've done. Ask him to come into your heart and save your soul. Tell Jesus you love him and believe he's the son of God. That he shed his blood to wash all this garbage away from you. And the peace will come, sweetheart, you're seeking. And ask Christ to be your savior into your heart and give him your life, honey. And you, you call that being born again. And then get in a great church it teaches. Don't stop, don't give up. Find a place where you feel the power of God, please. And with this, and as you accept him as Savior, let somebody know and talk about it. Amen, Amen. Dexter. Hallelujah. Go Amen. Ahead in Jesus' Amen. name. And Amen. now we release that. Yeah. Yes. Yesterday, a powerful anointing came on the people again, and so we're going to do the same prayer, Father, in the name Amen. of Jesus. Yes. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit. Your incredible love for yes. the lost, Father. Your yes. burden for the lost. The very yes, burden you had is blood poured out. Yes, of Lord. Your, Revival. Your very marks of the wounds in you, Jesus Christ. Oh, Revival. Very heart for the lost, for the harvest to be come in, Father. Right now we surrender to be your harvesters in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask the very burden of your heart, Father, Almighty. Oh, 
Christ. Yes, will Lord fill us Jesus. With that yes. And keep us filled and on fire. Yes. For the lost, Father. Let that burn next week. Last yes. Marisol, will you pray that they have boldness now? Yes, to go I pray that I impart boldness in the name of Jesus, Jesus to proclaim the gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Just cry out, if you will, for those that are lost. Yes. And we want to come in agreement with you right yes. now as yes. you cry out for those that are lost in your family yes. Yes. or otherwise. And we want to come in agreement and proclaim Acts 16.31. As you have believed, you and your whole household will be saved. And we Amen. want to come in agreement, Father. We ask you yes. to bring salvation to every member yes, of this household honey. and to all the generations in this yes. family, these family lines, until the return of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remember, Sister Mary is still ministering. So please contact us at Mary K. Baxter 1 at yahoo.com if you want her to come and speak at your church and you can talk to me at shalomshalom.org this has been your program Jeremiah 2911 God bless you we'll see you next week blessings yeah, amen shalom shalom, shalom.